Greetings, AP Calc students, and I want to welcome you to really what will be our last uh, couple of videos that covers uh, topic 10, uh, point 10 here, and really wrapping up what we refer to as unit 10A at Avon High School. Um, I know in the grand sequence of things, we still have our 10.8 topic about ratio tests to talk about, but when you look at the overall numbering scheme, this is uh, sort of the last concept over series uh, convergence that we talk about before we begin the wonderful journey into power series. So I want to warn you that there, um, there can be a lot of misconceptions about this particular topic, uh, the alternating series error bound. And so you want to listen really, really intently and make sure that you understand uh, what's happening here. It's going to be a, a little bit of calculator driven as well. So what are we going to talk about here? Well, you know, we, we've discussed ways in which we can determine whether an infinite series converges or diverges. But it's been a little disappointing lately because even though we can determine if a series converges, we can't really tell what that series converges to. Back at the very beginning of this journey, we could do that with a couple of different series. I'd like you to think for a moment, what two types of series could you determine what the infinite sum would be? Hopefully you're all thinking geometric series, definitely on the AP exam, and the telescoping series, which isn't typically going to be tested. But by and large, that's it. But the alternating series, the infinite alternating series, has a, a mechanism built in, not so much how you can find its sum, but at least how you can figure out how far off you are from being the actual sum. So that's something worth investigating, I suppose. So here's what we've got. The alternating series remainder. This is what's going to drive everything that we discuss here in topic 10.10. .10. I'm going to call this theorem 10.10, .10, the alternating series remainder. So basically, if we have a convergent alternating series that satisfies the condition that a n plus 1 is less than or equal to a n, which that's the non-increasing uh, uh, um, symbolism there, then the absolute value of the remainder that we're going to call R sub n that involves the approximation of the overall sum by using S sub n, the first n partial sums, is less than or equal to the first neglected term. Now, boy, that's a lot of language that's really hard to decipher. So I have it written down here in symbols. So basically, here's what you've got. Capital S is the infinite sum. It's the very elusive, shall I say, infinite sum. It's the infinite sum that you're just never going to be able to find in any series unless it's geometric or telescopic. Now, S sub n, as you probably remember, is the nth partial sum. Maybe we want to go up to the 10th term. Uh, maybe we want to go up to the 100th term. We can go up to the nth term very easily, and we could figure out what that sum is. It just depends on how motivated we are, how much technology that we have at our disposal. Well, we don't care about which one of these is bigger than the other, right? Because it's an alternating series, right? Sometimes we might be stuck at a negative value, a positive value, depending on where the plus or minus kind of rolled into there. So we don't care about that necessarily, and that's why we put the absolute values around it, so we have a positive result. Well, that's going to produce what's called our remainder. Sometimes the remainder is the error. It's how far off you are from having the actual sum, and so that's what I want you to think of this. It's the remainder or error bound, remainder or error, up to that nth term. That's why there's a subscript n. Now that's all fine and dandy and that really tells the tale, but what's even more remarkable is what follows. And that remainder, how far off you are from your overall sum, is always less than or equal to the absolute value of the very next term 
that you were going to add if you got that far. And that's what the absolute value of the a sub n plus 1 is. So that is this alternating series remainder that we actually are going to use a little bit more in the next video with our last example, example 2, parts a and b. Now we'll talk about it though here a little bit with our example 1. So this example 1 says just simply approximate the sum of the following series by its first six terms. And notice that this is an alternating series and it's not, not the harmonic series because the factorial sort of blows that out of the water. But then we have our our terms as you should uh, see there. So basically what this is saying is that we're just going to get 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 6 minus 1 over 24. This is going to give you a good factorial workout and that's probably the reason why I'm doing this. I'd like you guys to remember a little bit what 5 factorial is, 120, and 6 factorial is 720. So really, that's all I want here. I'm going to approximate that sum just by adding those particular fractions together. Okay? Well, let's go ahead and do that using some technology. All right, so, and i tell you what, when I say using some technology, I am not going to kid around here. I'm not going to kid around at all. I am going to go the full whoops let's make sure that this makes sense here <laughs> i'm going to go n equal one at the bottom i'm going to go the full the full nine yards with this technology and i'm just going to actually tell my calculator to compute this summation so this is exactly what we had on our paper multiply that by one over n factorial and i probably would like to get well hmm I, I could run the risk of getting a fraction for this, which is fine, but it's likely that because of the complexity of this, they're just going to give a decimal, which is perfectly acceptable as well. Now, if you were wondering, if I were to have added those fractions that we wrote out on paper, the answer is actually 91 over 144, which is fantastic, but we're going to go with this decimal. And it turns out that this decimal is very interesting and in that the fours do indeed repeat. So let's go back and write this up. So we've got these first six terms. Approximately, the summation is 91 over 144, which is about 0 0.63194, and I'll put the repeating line over the four. Now, this really doesn't invoke this alternating series remainder much, but I wanted to kind of show you how it does come into play going back to the calculator. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go up here, and, and once again, uh, let me, oops, let's try that again. I do not want, <laughs> I don't want that to be there. There we go. Let's go back up here. I'm going to grab him, and as I did in the previous video, my dream of dreams would certainly be able to change this upper boundary to an infinity and say, okay, I want to know what does this exactly add up to. Well, it's interesting. Sometimes we get a little lucky, and sometimes even our CAS calculators will be able to handle that upper boundary of infinity. But if you recall on that alternating harmonic from a previous video, we weren't able to get so uh, a result when we let this upper boundary be infinity, and I think I had to go up to, say, a million. A million is going to be pretty close to what your actual answer is going to be if you were to go to an infinity. So, okay, so let's say this is really what this series would add up to, 0.632 and some change. And we landed on 0.63194, pretty close. Well, what I wanted to to investigate is what is the value of that first neglected term? Well, okay, let's think about it. We added up the first six terms, so the first neglected term would be the seventh term. Now, if you remember, we're supposed to take its absolute value, so I'll go ahead and put the absolute value symbols in here. And let me make sure that, yep, you guys can barely kind of see that at the bottom of the screen. And then I'm going to go ahead and figure out what do I have for that term. In other words, I'm going to take negative 1, raise it to the 7 plus 1 power, which I know is 8, but let's 
go ahead and write out everything in its entirety. And then I'm going to multiply that by the fraction 1 over, and the n is 7, and I'll make that a factorial. Now when I hit enter, I get that decimal to six places. Now what does that mean? Well, remember by definition, we said that if we were to take the absolute value once again of the actual sum, which is that guy, if you recall, to many decimal places, right? I just copied and pasted this, and then I'm going to subtract this value, which was the sum of our first six terms, I get an answer of that. What are we looking at here? We'll compare these two values, and what do you notice? That yes, indeed, the difference between s and s sub 6 in this problem is certainly smaller than a sub 7. And that's what's going to be happening throughout all of this alternating series. It looks as if it relies fairly heavily on calculator use. I would say for the most part that's true. There can be certain problems written so that you can conceptualize this and not have to use a calculator, so you have to sort of stay on guard uh, for those. Anyway, I hope this helps, but I certainly want you to join the finale and watch example two as we actually apply this particular uh, alternating series remainder in a little bit different kind of question type. Hope this helps. We'll see you next time.